Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So if you want to um, paint loosely and uh, say goodbye to details, it's very simple. You have to give up a certain amount of control. So I woke up this morning thinking, I felt like the Aswan Dam. Does anyone else ever have that feeling, you know? I think the Hoover Dam would probably be more appropriate analogy for Americans because, you know, I, I think the Hoover Dam still exists, does it? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a big dam and behind it there's a whole lot of water all um, held up behind it, uh, which is controlled. And if that water exploded out, it would cause a lot of damage. Well, this morning I woke up feeling like a dam and as if there was a lot of pent up uh, grief and sadness and disappointment and all sorts of terrible things in my past, all being held back behind a dam, which was, as I said to my family, if anything happened, one more thing, one more drop of water piled up behind that dam, then they better watch out because I wouldn't be responsible for the result. So that's how I woke up this morning feeling, which is pretty terrible. But um, then I remembered the channel and I realised that I hadn't painted for a few days. And so I thought, well, serves me right. Uh, you're not actually the Hoover Dam or the Aswan Dam or any other dam dam. So just stop moaning and get on with life. So I took the dogs out and stood in the field for a while looking at the grey sky and worrying about my friend who's ill and my neighbour who died not long ago and every time I look at his house I think why isn't he standing outside smoking his cigarette. Um, he was my age and he died of lung cancer a couple of months ago. Um, anyway, enough of that sadness. It's nearly Christmas. Well, no, it's actually, I'm recording this now, but it won't probably go up until Boxing Day. So Christmas will be now a, a memory. Um, so anyway, to get back to the painting, um, after I've experienced my therapy session with you lot. Um, uh, yes, what was I going to say? Yes, if you want to paint loosely, you need to give up all control really and just allow your intuition and your um, uh, inner voice to to speak. So one way of doing that is to have a brush which you can't control and this is one of those brushes. This is a sword liner or a dagger and this one particular one is by Pro Art, and it is a size invisible as a, a medium anyway you can get them from most suppliers and definitely from Jackson's in England they do supply internationally so and I think their cost of shipping is quite low so you don't need to worry about that if you order them from there um so then so that's what you do and then the other thing that you can do is you can paint and this is a tip I picked up the other day from another artist who does it Paint with a lot more water than you normally do and allow, since this is watercolour, why wouldn't you, allow the water to do the work. And then the third thing that you can do is to stop paralysing yourself with choice of colours and just pick any two. I've got here, I've got um, olive green, I think that is, any green would do. And um, I've got, I think this is alizarin crimson. Any red would do. You could use, just depends, anything, any colour, doesn't matter. Any two colours. And then think about flowers. Sort of generally, just kind of say to yourself in, in your mind, flower. And then just let the brush dabble and dingle and 
dangle on the paper and and think pattern. Don't think this has got to look like something. Think, if anything, what I normally think is, would I like curtains or a duvet cover in, in this design? And if I wouldn't, then I stop. And then just do a design. This is, uh, I started this morning with this. This was a paler pink and um, a smaller piece of paper. So I started with that. And uh, then after that, I did some leaves, which is nice. So I'll do that in a minute. Um, and so, yeah. So now I'm, I'm standing, actually, which is the best way of using these pens, brushes. And I'm just dabbing the paint on. It's a little bit like Chinese painting, I suppose, because I'm using the end of the brush, only the end of the brush, and I'm using a lot, a lot, a lot of water. I should bring my water closer because I keep reaching for it. And I should move that out of the way and put that next to it because that's what I'm doing. This is, this is therapy, art is therapy. I think it was Mary Oliver who said something along the lines of art is fabulous. It's the one thing that might save us all. And I, I probably agree with that. Certainly, um, it can be good for your sanity. Although, you know what I find? A lot of the <coughs> so-called art that's out there at the moment um, doesn't make my soul sing because there's an awful lot of quite distressingly ugly stuff and the um what do you call it the things like procreate you know those then that's not the same i mean it's fine in its place but it's not it's not the same as picking up a brush and uh, allowing real color real pigment to just dance across the paper. Oh, I'm using a sheet of Baohong. This is a pad, a glued block. And uh, that's nice because it doesn't, um, the kink doesn't buckle, doesn't buckle. Doesn't buckle, yes. And as I'm going across the page, you can see that uh, the design is changing, evolving slightly. As I'm experimenting with the, with the brush and the, the idea that I started off with. So my flowers are just In the spring, when there's real flowers out there, it's nice to have a bunch of weeds in front of you to draw from. And Marjorie Blamey and her beautiful renditions, we did a lot of her stuff, things like hers, at the beginning of this summer. Um, that's great, but um, you have to concentrate for that. Whereas for, if you're doing something like this, it really is a case of let the paper and the paint do the work. You just, you just hold the brush. And then when you're finished, you'll feel better. I will anyway. If it's a pretty design, you might cut part of it up and make it into a greetings card. If it's very good, because sometimes you never know, things do turn out really well. Um, then you could even frame it. Give it away, sell it on Etsy or whatever. So by the time I'd got to this side, as you can see, it had loosened up a lot. This is a little bit more tight. So um, you can leave it like that if you want. I think it looks quite nice like that, but because I'm in a playful mood today, ha ha. Um, 
I'm going to use some sepia ink. This is by some company called Rora and Klingner from Leipzig in East Germany. Uh, but you can use any sepia ink. You can find that available in any shop. And I'm going to just start scratching in some additional leaves and things. And because, because I feel like it. I'm a bit hungry, I think I need to eat something. I hope you had a nice Christmas, everybody. It's funny how it always passes so quickly after all the preparations and everything, although for me this year, I haven't really done much. I think maybe that was what was making me feeling a bit, feel a bit, and I'm sure a lot of you have the same as we get older and most of the fun Christmases are behind us. We have the memories, but maybe the memories are better than the real thing, actually. It's true. Some of the things I remember most from Christmas's past are the, the disasters, like the year our dog knocked over the Christmas tree and, um, and the, the little unpleasantnesses from relatives that you couldn't really quite get round. There we are. So you could paint into this wet paint in some places. And it's quite nice when the ink goes into the, the blob and runs. And then after you've, when you've got bored with this and you think, oh my God, I really need a cup of coffee or tea or something you stop and then go away. And when you come back, it's dried and you think, oh, did I do that? Mm. I should get that framed. If you see something, what, one thing you can do is if you see a shape that sort of looks like a, a flower, you can just kind of outline it. So turning this into sort of, um, oh God, what are they called? Chrysanthemums. Anyway, don't do too much perhaps, you know, sort of try to think when to stop. This is just a dip pen. This is just an old fashioned dip pen. The nib comes off eventually. That's it. And you can get lots of different sizes like this. There's a whole bunch of different ones in here. Um, a lot of them are the same as one another. I inherited these from somebody. God knows why he felt he needed. He's got that thousand nibs I don't know. Men, they always get over excited about things, don't they? You know. But anyway, so that's that. So we're gonna let that dry. I'm not entirely sure about some of these areas, so I'm gonna dab out some of the colour just to make it a little bit more varied. Now I quite like dabbing out some of the paint because it gives a little bit more texture. So we're going to let that dry and we'll come back to that later and see what we think. And then I'm going to, I'm going to show you this, which is um, a really cool thing to do. It's fun. It's just pure fun. Do they look like trees? I think they do. You can use those if you make something like this. You can use it as part of a painting. And all it is, it's scratching out and it's rather fun to do and quite, uh, what's the word, um, uh, cathartic. So I've got here some burnt sienna. This is a small sheet of watercolour paper, which is also in a block, so it's glued on the four sides. <clears throat> and so it won't buckle, and that's 
that's pretty crucial. You can't do this technique unless you either have a block or you very firmly tape down your paper all round, or better still, stretch it. And now I'm just really painting quite thickly with burnt sienna onto this piece of paper. I think I got the idea for doing this because we're painting the wall where my husband has just been putting up air conditioning units in the kitchen. There's the third one going in, got one in the front room, one in here. And now he's doing the one in the kitchen because I'm actually afraid of the weather and what's coming to us because every year a few thousand people in France die of heat stroke and um, it's getting worse every year. It started in 2004 and the thing is most people in this country don't have air conditioning and there's nowhere to go. You can't go to the mall and, and hang out there when it's too hot or anything else because Nobody has air conditioning. Well, we do now. So as long as the electricity doesn't go out, it'll be okay. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. You would never, I would never have ever dreamt of it. But if you say to anyone, and I know I'm talking to Americans here, and I know you all know what it is. And in California, you wouldn't be able to live without it. And it's getting like that here, but nobody has a clue what I'm talking about if I say we're going to put in air conditioning. It heats us in the winter and it works really well, and in the summer it saves our lives. So how bad can that be? And they all go, what? Anyway, so there we are. That's nicely covered with paint, and now I've got an old bank card here. I've cut off one corner of it, and then I've cut off the corners again to give me three different um, widths of scraper. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm literally going to scrape into the paint, and create trees and a forest. You can use the point to drag out from the side to give you um, branches. You can do them straight or you can do them crooked. You can use the fat side. You can use it on an angle. And then when you've got enough, you stop. And you let it dry. There we are. That's how you do a forest of trees. You can correct it too if you make a mistake like that. And you can keep going as long as you like. You can make it into a veritable jungle. So we'll put that aside now and let that dry and we'll see what happens at the end. And um, this one, which I did earlier, which is now dry, I was thinking would make quite a nice background for a design. And um, so what I thought was, I thought about if you drew leaves on top of it. Oops, that's my pad falling on the floor, never mind. Um, so yeah, so another way of wasting a few hours, just get your dip pen and draw different shaped leaves on top, the heck of it. Not to make it look like a leafy forest, but to make it look like a design. And it may or may not work. But what can you have lost? The worst you can do is have a piece of paper that you need to cut up into bookmarks. I would honestly suggest it's never a good idea to throw away any watercolour that you've done. Recycle it. Paint on the back. 
Wash the paint off if you can, if it's a thick paper, good quality paper. Um, or paint over it with gesso and start again. Don't throw it away. There's a lot of waste in this world. So I'm just, again, still using the same um, pen, the dip pen. I'm using sepia ink. It's possible that black might have been better. I might not like this when it's done. But if I don't like it, then I'll do another one. I did a painting a little while ago of a forest of trees, which if you're interested in landscapes, it was a quick one done using the Ron Ranson uh, technique of um, using the Hake Hake brush. Um, I think that was probably about two or three months ago now, so you can find it if you search on YouTube if you're interested in loose watercolour landscapes. It was really just a sort of treescape. If you use lots of ink, you can get a much heavier shape. So we could say that the first ones I did were background, and now I'm coming in with foreground. Something I've been thinking of doing for a long time is doing a design, I don't know what design, something I've painted and then decided I quite liked, and sending it away to one of these companies that prints fabric for you so that you can make your own design into, let's say, cushions or uh, even clothing, curtains, bedding. I think that would be really cool. I must get around to doing it sometime. There's so many things out there that you can do nowadays. One thing that is a problem nowadays I find is that I can't find clothes. I don't know where to buy a good sweater made from decent wool that isn't going to fall apart in five seconds and cost me a million pounds. I don't know what's going on. I used to buy jumpers from a company called Woolovers and another company called Land's End. But that stuff's up absolute rubbish now. I mean, absolute, in the, in the literal sense of the word, total garbage. And all made in China, and the sizes are just all over the show. Oh, God. I don't know. If anyone knows a good place to buy clothes, let me know, because otherwise, before long, I'm going to have to run around naked, and that would not be a good idea. Right. 
I think there's enough ink on there now. I'm going to let that dry. And um, I think that's probably enough for one day. We've got this design, which is not quite dry yet. We've got that one. And this one's coming along. And this one I did earlier. And, oh yes, and the other thing I didn't do with it. Um, oh, it's here. That one, which is just the leaf shapes that I've just been drawing on there, drawn around leaves that I painted on first. So I'll just show you that. Okay, so I can go out the way for now. So what I did for one like this, this is absolutely not rocket science, guys. But anyway, so I just picked up a biggish brush. I think this is a number 12, 11, and Every couple of strokes changed the color a little bit by using my uh, my messy palette. I'm just picking up at random. Honestly, uh, you should all have one of these palettes if you've got the space. And then you can pick up a real variety just Every couple of strokes change it, so it's something different. Not very different, I mean, we don't want to make a kind of amazing Technicolor raincoat. Uh, but whatever picks you up, choose, uh, whatever peaks for you, your interest and so we just do leaf shapes, really rough leaf shapes. It's a bit autumnal, isn't it? The one I did before was quite pinkish. And I quite liked that, so I'll put some more pink in. And this one will probably be a little bit different. And then it's quite nice sometimes to have a bit of grey, greyish or brownish. Whoops, a bit of blue there. I'm doing this one really quickly because, you know. And then you grab your pen and there's lots of different kinds of pens that you could use. And if you haven't got a dip pen, don't worry, just use a fine liner or something. The advantage of this kind of pen is that as you draw around the leaves, where you let it touch, you get these lovely runs. So Meditation in leaf. You can do this a lot slower than me. I think it's a good idea to do it really slowly, but not always such a good idea when you're recording a video where it's a bit repetitive. I was watching a video of how to crochet something yesterday and she was doing it in real time, which is great because you can try and 
I found myself trying to make, to, uh, to go as fast as she was going, which is probably not what I meant to do. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that you can teach yourself or someone else how to crochet by watching these videos all for free? It's amazing. We used to struggle with books and I don't think I ever really understood how to follow a crochet pattern from a written instruction. I can follow a knitting pattern, but I'm not good with crochet patterns, but I don't have any problems following them when they're showing me how. It's a lot easier, isn't it? <clears throat> I like um, shader in stitches. She's very clear. It's a little bit kooky, but she's very, very good teacher. There are lots of them there. Lots of them are very good. So there we are. There's the first go round. And then on the other one, what I did was I went round again. And as they started to dry, I did a couple of things. Um, you can, if they're still wet, you can scratch into the middle and you get a line, a darker line, where it's indenting into the paint. And the paint runs into the groove that you're scratching in. So that's quite nice. But if they're drying, then you can come in with ink and you can do some winky wonky lines. A few. I'm sure not everybody likes this kind of work, but I do. I hope you do. is relaxing. Just keep saying, if you've got to say anything in your head, say, this is for me, this is for me, this is not for anyone else, this is for me, this isn't to sell, this isn't to give, this isn't, this isn't for anyone except me and the pleasure of it and the paper, the feeling of the paper, the feeling of the pen and you know, I'm old enough now that I can do things for me. If not now, then when? Doesn't matter if your hand shakes. Doesn't matter if the ink runs. In fact, you want it to. And then you could put little sort of seed, flowery seed head things in some of the spaces if you wanted to. I did on the other one. Didn't have to do that. And you could, if you wanted to, also find a slightly smaller brush and you can modify the colour. Um, you could intensify the green on the green ones. That one needs a... You could intensify the pink on the pink ones if you want. But you don't really need to. Nobody, nobody cares except you, and you don't care much. There we are. Leaf study. I can't believe it, it's 12 o'clock. Already.
So there we are. I'm going to call it a day. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give it a go. You'll have fun, I'm sure. And uh, just take some time for yourself. A treat on Boxing Day. So I'll let you go now and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, don't forget to click like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you like this. So I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.